Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Vicky 3, Episode 17. I've reached a stage where we can really fine-tune a few things that are happening. And I'm, I'm looking to do that in this episode. For example, uh, journal entries. Something that I've been ignoring entirely in previous playthroughs because you are scraping by. Because you are t doing one thing at a time to grow and expand to, to be sustainable long-term. Well, now... You know, you have a little bit to spare income wise and, you know, growing more rapidly. So I actually can focus on things like branching out to try to get a railroad boom to, to get this philosophy department event. That one is pretty dang easy when we only have a single university. Uh, so opening up the philosophy department for our university seems like a good way to get a a boost of some kind. So for a small increase in, in overall price, we're adding qualifications, innovation, plus three, well, that's of course a very good thing, uh, and then you know, cost of more paper. Of course we'll take that one on. Bakara have accepted our defensive pact, so we are making progress uh, with Bukara. It's like trade route volume is going to be the way to get them into the customs. I've already gotten McCran into one. I don't remember if we have. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, and we still have. We still have our obligation. Well, anyway, short term railroad is coming. We we are getting that railroad active and going. First one in Mazanderin. And we're going to very quickly see our infrastructure problem resolved. And let's right away get in here and see what we can do about switching to wooden passenger carriages. Lowers the infrastructure a little bit. Lowers the amount of transportation you get. Uh, but it offsets the cost, the state cost. Uh, hello. Bakara wishes to join our customs union. Absolutely. And so we now should have Bakara and McCran on our market let's see if that's the case and it is so they are they are both in uh, we fixed the infrastructure issue here we have not fixed it in the other two areas but we have another railroad on the way to fix one of them and so that standard of living that was locked in at 10 and not really growing our introduction introduction of goods to the market that's starting to expand access to just basic needs type goods is finally starting to pay off and we've seen the standard of living already rise a full point in a short period of time. Meanwhile, our Western Afghanistan incorporation is a third of the way up. Oh, engines and coal now an issue, okay? Engines and coal are now an issue for uh, our railway. So we're gonna have to start producing that as well. Engines and coal, let's see what we have. We do have access to coal mines, so that's that's a very good thing. Get the motor industry on the go as well. Lucasan is picking up a lot of the new stuff uh, as they had nothing, so we're, we're trying to get them going. With a low amount of transportation coming out of the railway, and already large numbers of things. I mean, we have eight logging camps that are active in Mazandarin alone, the first railway. And to have that switched uses 40, meaning it's not even quite covered as it is. Now the Bacara has been added to our market. More to keep an eye on. And the market has changed, you know, a bit. Anyway, grain, not as big of a deficit as before. Still a deficit. Could always use more. Uh, cloth is fine now. We are much closer on, on wood being relevant. And I still have some more logging camps that are queued up. So that's going to be better. Uh, services are always a shortage, but I think as our population changes, I mean, that's that's just people. That is just people to employ. I, I have a feeling that that's going to change as, you know, literacy or access to education or something. Something, you know, societal will fix that one. Clothing, huge shortage, and I do have some textile industry growth on the way, same as the uh, furniture. So, you know, those are both on the go. In fact, we have a furniture manufactory being made right now. Uh, opium, not a big deficit. The demand's not super high. 
you know, that should ultimately keep up. Silk is a bit high. We're, we're a little over on silk, so we don't want to add there anytime soon. Uh, groceries continues to be something that you know, we need to provide more of, but we're not talking about major deficits. But again, as the population moves up, uh, as our standard of living increases, those demands are just going to get higher and higher. Luxury clothes are now good to go, taken care of for the time being. Uh, arms industry still needs more growth, and transportation clearly is subpar. Make more happen with that short term, long term. Uh, cannons as well so artillery is not quite where it needs to be uh coffee is something we haven't even gotten involved in and now colon engines is that short-term one that we aren't even supplying and it's costly and it's part of the reason why the railway is struggling a bit so i have things queued up for that and i've moved them up the queue quite a bit but i didn't put them straight to the top i think our first coal should be coming quite soon uh, I think it's like right after this third railway, we have the, the third area that is struggling in that department. Ooh, what do we have? Kiev? <laughs> Kiva wants to join the customs union. Yes. Look at that. Okay. We are making a nice, healthy market around the area. And yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm liking how this is going. Short term. Th this is short term, but my oh my what a balance that is gold reserves four and a half million i love it uh you know what that suggests to me let's let's make sure this doesn't just bounce back down okay it's still pretty dang healthy we're gonna lower taxes short term because as a result uh boost to legitimacy and minus 10 percent radicals from standard of living so we want to see radicals go bye bye right now they're going higher uh, this is going to help that fix now there's that bounce back that i was expecting earlier uh, but it's still positive balance and you know we can only handle so much when it comes to gold reserves anyway so as long as we're keeping a neutral balance we are good in the short term and i'm loving how this persian market is getting stronger as we're adding more states into that market. I mean, we, we've brought in a double, triple, quadruple state. So four additional states plus the 12 that we already have. Speaking of one of those 12, Western Afghanistan coming up on 60% now, 60%. Kiva is ready to accept a defensive pact. So we, we continue to grow and expand that portion of the influence as we're trying to uh, pick up these three nations through other means and, and just see how that goes as we keep pushing on. The offensive pact has been accepted, so we, we now have that in place. We already have the customs union in place. The tributary part, a little bit harder. Bukhara seems to be the closest as they are not seeking the defensive, but we, we don't have a huge power projection advantage. Uh, so we're still short by 42. Our first coal mine is nearly done, so that should start to address the fact that our railways don't have any coal on the market. And that'll help with the offset those costs, as we have three rail lines now. Speaking of three rail lines, uh, I have not changed things locally here. All right, so the first coal mine is done, and it's it's bringing in almost half of what we need. So actually, it's it's pretty good on that front, uh, and one more will will get us at a neutral enough state where we're not going to have an issue. Uh, I'm definitely understanding now into this third playthrough the market and and the strength of the market and somehow Baluchistan. How are we short? Are we really infrastructure minus zero? It's right at full. Yeah, 38 of 37. We're going to need to very quickly expand the railway here to a second level. And let's expand that barracks, get that to full, especially now, now that it's fully incorporated here. So our base of 50 for innovation is now at a 59, but plus nine, so we have a university. Well, now I have three universities, but I've also got that philosophy department in each. So what we're getting is times three uh, on on the additional innovation 
So plus nine to our original 50, where just a year ago we were at 52, so plus seven on that. Uh, it's not a huge difference, but it's absolutely a difference, and it is going to make things go up a lot more you know, rapidly, and technology spread is absolutely still a thing, but we're certainly progressing so much faster in this playthrough than the last one. By the way, we are not quite to halfway through this playthrough, things have settled and slowed a bit. Expansionist ideas, it might be time to start looking at that again. I just really wanted to get these two fully incorporated before we even think about expanding further. And then of course, you know, we're doing the diplomatic play at this point just to see how that goes. But nearby, you know, you have neighbors like Sindh, uh, the rest of Afghanistan we could possibly take. Uh, this what is it? Co Cocand? Uh, we could probably take, but we don't actually touch their borders. And then uh, I think at this point, expansion south, like Bahrain, Oman, uh, Tr Truchiel states would be a good direction for us to go. Right now, I'm happy with the size that we have and the options that are available to us. So I'm not so keen on rapid expansion at this stage especially i'd like to kind of get our military to the next stage and to get our military to the next stage we need to start producing steel so short term i'm more focused on standard of living than that uh, and our economy which i mean at the moment is a negative but of course we are not collecting anywhere near the maximum taxes that we could be uh, another thing we could do uh, that i've been looking at as an option is getting the intelligentsia into the government which would still leave us with 64 percent legitimacy which is pretty decent uh, but it opens up a whole set of laws that would then become available to us and the first one that i was looking at is compulsory uh, primary school which would give us education institution investment is all I mean, that, that's all that that necessarily does for us uh, straight up front, but it's a start on making them happy and not making others upset and could be done pretty quick. I didn't have everything I needed to make it happen before, but I just completed uh, human rights in research and now it's available. Uh, I think getting the intelligentsia happy uh, without offending anybody else is a great direction to go forward so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to confirm and then we are going to look to pass so right now child labor allowed is plus 30 percent to dependents income but mortality is much higher restricted child labor uh, cuts in that income a little bit but it cuts down on the mortality to get to compulsory primary school uh, we're going to see the education and institution investment go up a lot and the mortality negative impact is going to go away and the other thing is you know there's three groups that don't like <laughs> that child labor is a lot allowed for now it would only be at a nine percent boost uh, it would take a while to pass this but at 180 days we still have a decent amount of le legitimacy so it's not going to take forever and we're also finally one year, less than one year, away from Western Afghanistan being incorporated. And that's huge because it's two and a half million people. It's a big chunk of our population to finally uh, take it in and start contributing to, well, taxes, being a part of the government. So our first go has just a 9% chance of passing. Debate is a worrying one because it's the overwhelming chance so our first event was a negative one and it took away any chance of success that we had uh, we still have a chance to advance though but it, it's not looking great for uh, compulsory primary school at this time and we might have to uh, cancel our attempt at it the event actually cost us some bureaucracy which means we're now seeing a deficit and we're now seeing tax waste of three percent uh, but as we are just 11 weeks away from incorporating Western Afghanistan, it's not going to be a problem for very long at all. Uh, taxation capacity is going to be way over, though, so we are going to need uh, to improve that taxation capacity here quite soon. 
the Intelligentsia and the Petite Bourgeoisie are not going to be happy for five years, but we get a 20% boost to trying to achieve the goal. So we actually did get somewhere that time, with a bit of a trade-off at least. And Western Afghanistan is finally incorporated, and instantly we go from a negative 2,000 uh, balance to a positive 6,000 balance, just like that, even with taxes turned down quite a bit. Uh, you can see construction goods are getting more and more expensive at 11,000. Actually, still only half of what we're paying government work. By the way, something that I've not been using effectively uh, is decrees. First playthrough, I, I did it a little bit. Didn't see much of an effect, and, and therefore I, I just kind of stepped away from it. But here I am. It's time to get back into it. For one thing, we have plenty of authority to put in, but... Uh, promoting national values in Western Afghanistan and Baluchistan in particular with their large population base and the number of radicals that they still have. Assimilation and conversion going up by 100 for the cost of 150 authority is going to be a very, very smart move. But there are others as well. Uh, social mobility, increasing qualifications, education access, uh, welfare payments are a good way to raise standard of living, you would think. Uh, road maintenance improves infrastructure. That was one of the ways we could have fixed the infrastructure problems that we had earlier. Construction efficiency also going up is certainly not a bad thing. But service industries, throughput, meaning our service industries would be resolved. Manufacturing uh, industries, throughput going up by 20% means we're just going to make more money through manufacturing. We're, we're going to get better production of goods where we have a lot of our manufacturing centered, which is Tabriz, Iraq, Jemi, and soon to be Western Afghanistan, if not already, and I've been, you know, pushing into uh, Baluchistan a bit as well. And agricultural industry uh, is another good one to, uh, to, to get things going, kind of centralizing where things are being done instead of doing it spread out all over. Seems like a really good thing <laughs> that you can do. Uh, migration traction. Like, there's a lot of things that I've not been utilizing that I probably should be. I was already mentioning that we need steel uh, to progress. Well, it turns out we need steel right away. I made the motor industry so we can start producing engines so that the railways have what they need. And that requires steel too. So. Uh, it's very much time to to get on with uh, with steel. Steel mills are going to use coal and iron. Uh, that is the goods that they are going to consume. Right now, I don't think we have iron. We do have coal on the market, uh, so we'd at least have the first of those. But we need to get steel mills, and we're going to need to start mining. So I've set up a couple of trade routes, partially out of necessity. Uh, one was an event. And partially out of I just know where we're at on the market and it's going to take time to, to kind of build things up uh, but it is playing into our balance just a bit it's not a bad balance right now but let's let's go ahead and just fix that uh, and go back to neutral uh, I don't mind you know minor deficit spending but I certainly don't like major deficit spending now part of this is that bureaucracy deficit that we have uh, right now which I thought would have been fixed easily when uh, Western Afghanistan became fully incorporated uh, all of those bureaucrats should become available again uh, our taxation capacity is way 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 over in within Western Afghanistan so we're actually collecting a lot less than what we actually could collect another 10% towards uh, trying to pass compulsory primary school. She are not going to be mm, terribly happy, but the intelligentsia will be. Uh, clergyman pops in Rekajemi are going to become a radical as a result. That's that's a pretty small group to have a small impact. Uh, ticket us now up to a 30% chance of, of success, and the debate is down to 50%. We've had a debate outcome every single time thus far. Taxation capacity, the way to get that up is government administrations so let, let's go ahead and also try to increase that one what do we have here for filing cabinets uh, taxation capacity cannot well 
since we just started to incorporate paper as that shortage of paper. So looks like paper is the other one we need to, to work on, but taxation capacity going up is going to improve that income here in Western Afghanistan. We're not gonna see the same issues we had. Yeah, it's down to 28% from what it was, so at 36 before. Uh, so improving that by 8% is seeing our balance neutralized. By the way, I actually did uh, added a construction network here. That's part of the reason why our expenses ended up negative again. We're up to 17. Slowly getting faster and faster uh, with construction as we go. Oh, the incorporated states themselves have a cost in bureaucracy. Okay, the education has a cost. Oh, well, no, that was that was something I wanted to turn up. The trade routes. That's what's doing it. Trade routes minus 60. Uh, so that the in Incorporated states, I didn't know that that was going to increase, so that probably went up by close to 100. Trade routes went up with a minus 60, so okay, okay, I got you. Uh, the incorporated states themselves added another 10. So I see where the additional need came from. Industrial barriers, this is another uh, on our attempt to get this passed. And this was a negative. This was a big time negative. Uh, we'll, we'll take the interest to Shia uh, not liking us. So there was nothing positive about that debate. Mutual funds unlocked. Plus 10% minting. Instantly we see a boost. Probably a good thing to lower the bureaucracy population cost multiplier as we know that that's quite high. So we'll go ahead and work on philosophical pragmatism. I'm starting to see that this is a game of if you accomplish X, it's going to impact X, but it's also going to impact Y and Z. It's probably going to impact E, G, and A along the way as well, because everything impacts everything, impacts everything, impacts everything. There is the entire world has this giant web of... You know, you, you you touch one little string of that web, the spider on the far, far, far end feels the whole web shake and is going to react. Uh, I think that's my best way of describing how Victoria 3 works in a nutshell. Everything impacts everything. So to upgrade one industry is going to have an effect across your entire economy. Not everything positively. Grain has finally neutralized. I think some of that is happening from our neighbors, as I haven't been adding to that. Uh, wood is still at a deficit, but it is so much closer than what it was. Uh, but it, it's quite clear that furniture and clothing needs are nowhere near being met. And I think that's why our standard of living remains ultimately, at, you know, so low at, at this point in time. We are finally starting to produce steel just just getting started as a result uh, engines are on the rise but obviously nowhere near uh, what the capacity is that that is actually necessary but it's it's coming up so uh, let's check in on what the production should be for that uh, so check it in on our one motor industry the employment is finally coming together it's going to be at full here quite soon um, what we should expect is 40 engines from 30 steel. So we'll, we'll be there quite soon. So 40 engines and our need, well, our need was quite a bit higher than that, right? All right, we finally had a, a good outcome. Uh, not a debate, but advance, just straight advance. And so we're gonna take the extra 10% plus the popularity and an interest group pop attraction for Intelligentsia. Uh, as that's the way forward. That's the way to a lot of positive events. Getting a little confusing on why it's still taking so long to get enacted, but we're up to a 60% chance of success, 21% chance to advance, and just 17% chance left on debate, which was again the outcome that we had the last time uh, with only a 10% increase and a slightly negative outcome on that one. Uh, our steel mill is going to be massively in demand for now it's struggling just to employ everybody because it's not bringing in a ton of money uh, 
largely because it hasn't had the right resources. Also, it looks like we just don't have a, a good capitalist. <laughs> Capitalists are not doing well. Passed a law advancement, and yet our percentage dropped. Uh, the, some side event, passing of a leader, expiration of some sort of other event, whatever the case may be, we dropped by about 20% and then recovered 10% of that. So we have a 50% chance of passing compulsory primary school this time around, but it's been a bit of a struggle to, to get this done. I mean, yes, we did start with low odds, but meanwhile, the economy is getting bigger, better, stronger, and we're about to expand that motor industry a little bit. Uh, in the barracks, one of those positive things that we can do, though, obviously comes at an expense. 4,000 is a bit to cover off, but recovery rate of our troops goes from 25% up to 50% for the use of fabric and opium, which there's, there's good use for opium. Uh, within our nation. So we're, we're, meanwhile, I'm also trying to expand our barracks uh, into every place that we have. You can see right now we, we have a decent uh, outcome on, on what we have for our evaluation of where we're at. Health system, we're going to go ahead and take the next level to take mortality from 5 to 10% de decrease. Uh, it's going to take about a year to implement that, but it's progress. That's some of that extra bureaucracy that we have that balance is getting better and better all the time, by the way. We are feeding the economy in a much better way than still the two areas that need us the most. Still pretty big shortages, minor shortages, I, I suppose you could say, of coal and iron, so we're going to want to continue to grow those. And tools are definitely on a shortage now. Afghanistan proposing a trade agreement, so there's the next one to start bringing into the market uh, and expanding that yet further. Still did not pass, really? 20% chance to, to get it this time. We're gonna have to. Approval's gonna drop, but this is getting ridiculous. We had a 60% chance a while ago. Now we're up at 70%. We've had 50% chance multiple times. Uh, government administration, I'm gonna have to get some more on the go as the, uh, the soon-to-be upgrade is gonna cost over 100. Finally, oh my gosh, it's been so long to get this passed, but com compulsory primary school, as in children have to go to school now through the early years, has finally been passed, and you know we're going to see a big positive outcome in a few of the groups, uh, and it's the right groups. They're going to be really happy with that one, so a big, big step towards progress for us, and what other pathways does that one open up for us? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet. But the economy has grown and grown and grown, though the balance at this exact moment is negative, but we are increasing expenses as we go along, so it's it's not one way or the other. Uh, GDP, 14.5 million. Literacy is only slowly growing, but compulsory primary schools, I think, will open up access to education quite a bit more. And we're going to see that rise. Uh, standard of living slow, slow to grow because we have such a large population. So even though you make clothing, you're making clothing for a very small percentage of the of what you have. And so you need a lot of it. And we are just not meeting those demands at all. So it's been very, very, very slow to climb. Uh, the middle strata, the upper strata are doing, you know, okay, but it's that lower strata that's just not able to get beyond impoverished. And so we're only 120th worldwide in, in standard of living. That is still the biggest, biggest thing that we need to improve as we go along. Population, number 12 worldwide, with over 12 million people now, all fully incorporated finally. And, and that's big. Uh, but right now, you know, dependents are very, very high. Unemployed, not low. Getting more uh, peasants on the go is going to come largely from creating jobs. Radicals has been stuck right at about a million for quite a while, but we're about to see a few groups that are suddenly happy and nobody upset with what we just passed. So that could change. Hopefully we'll see that drop back off. Uh, and loyalists are doing pretty well. 
it's been steady. We now have three nations incorporated into our market. We're looking to add a fourth in Afghanistan in the near future. So that part is definitely good that we are the regional power that is you know bringing those groups forward and and they've resolved a couple of our issues with things on the market that we weren't quite getting the access that we needed. Um, I'm continuing to expand as you know tools are on the way next. I'd still love to get them in as a tributary of some kind, even if it's a small gain, but it's it's more about making subjects and eventually incorporating them into our larger state. So it's just trying to continue on with that. But diplomatically, expansion the other way I think is a distinct possibility once again. And the direction we want to go with that is south. We want to go probably next as they have multiple states that are within, technically within our borders. Uh, I'd like to get those added in. Uh, so Oman is probably our next target. Last I checked, they were really weak, but that was a long time ago. Let's, let's just take a quick look at what Oman looks like now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they would, they would be quite easy. It, it's a matter of uh, what sort of friends do they have. They have a defensive pact with Katiri and Lahej. So these two neighbors, uh, what do those two look like? No forces. They have no forces at all. So uh, depending on who's interested, Oman would be a very, very easy target. And it looks like we could probably incorporate, you know, a lot. <laughs> a lot. We could take quite a bit off of Oman, I would think. It just depends on who else is interested in the region that might want to interfere. But then we'll look into that next episode. That's going to do it for this one. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.